This time on The Greats, Hannah Ashrawi's contribution to peace, Hollywood's titan Steven Spielberg, the unbelievable life of J.K. Rowling, and Roger Bannister remembers the four-minute mile. But first, The Suffragettes, part two. At the end of the first decade of the 20th century, British women were still disenfranchised. The suffragettes stepped up their militant campaign, drawing attention to their cause through acts of civil disobedience, arson, and bombings. In 1914, most suffragettes threw their weight behind the war effort. Using funding from the government, leader Emmeline Pankhurst organized a parade of 30,000 women to encourage businesses to employ women so men could leave for the front. The war divided the Pankhurst family. Daughter Christabel followed her mother's lead. But her sister Sylvia was a pacifist and formed the Women's Peace Army to campaign for a negotiated settlement to the war. Sylvia also opened four mother and baby clinics in London, observing that more babies had died in the first year of the war than British soldiers. Another sister, Adela, fell out with her family and emigrated to Australia where she joined the peace movement, became an active communist and then defected to a fascist organization. The war had a huge impact on women's position in British society. The number of women in employment rose from three million to almost five million by the end of the war. In 1918, Parliament passed a law extending voting rights to women aged over 30. However, it was another 10 years before British women achieved the same voting rights as men. The first woman elected to the British Parliament was Countess Constance Markovitz, a Sinn Féin activist who was serving a prison term for her anti-conscription activities. She refused to take up her seat in the House of Commons, as it would have involved swearing an oath of allegiance to the King. The first woman to actually enter Parliament was Viscount Nancy Astor, who won a 1919 by-election. In 1953, former suffragettes gathered to celebrate their achievements and remember the bitter struggle that saw many of them jailed. They included Mary Richardson, who displayed the medals commemorating her prison hunger strike. Eileen Casey and Lillian Lenton went to jail six times. brave people who defied convention to fight for female emancipation were fated as heroes and heroines. At Westminster, a statue to Emmeline Panker stands as a memorial to the suffragette struggle. The activist herself died in 1928, just a few weeks after women were given equal voting rights to men. A recent exhibition at the Women's Library in London celebrated the 100th anniversary of Emmeline Pankhurst's Women's Social and Political Union by charting the history of the suffragette movement. Sourced from a wide range of private and public collections, the artifacts showed how women of the time used everything from embroidery to the latest printing techniques to spread their demands for equality. One Australian suffragette even distributed pamphlets over London from an airship. Muriel Matters visited Britain in 1908 and gained public notoriety when she was arrested for chaining herself to the grill that enclosed the ladies' gallery in the House of Commons. Muriel was sentenced to a month's jail, but the grill was permanently removed. If you say to most people in this country now, do you know it's only 75 years since women had the vote on the same terms of men, they'll say, what? And particularly younger women, they're absolutely flabbergasted when they realise it's within their grandparents' or their great-grandparents' memory that women became equal citizens. So it's incredibly important, really, that people have that sense of their history and also just really energising, I think. Some people really go out on a limb for what they believe in and to get equal rights and I really respect that. It took 61 years after the first woman was elected to British Parliament for Britain to elect its first female Prime Minister. Margaret Thatcher took office in 1979 and the suffragette effort also paved the way for other women to reach the top of their fields. It's thanks to the vision and determination of these women that their granddaughters and great-granddaughters have so many opportunities.
three,